Thank you very much. Um, I've heard you talk about uh, supersonic aircraft. Um, <clears throat> you guys have done some beautiful work at SpaceX on VTOL. Uh, uh, cl clearly, Tesla is is focused on electric. Uh, have you thought about the, the synergies of electric and VTOL and aircraft for yeah. solving the 405 <laughs> challenge? <laughs> I do think there's there's a really um, like the, I think the optimal sort of air transport solution is a VTOL uh, electric supersonic plane. Um, and, and it actually works together quite well for a, a bunch of reasons. Um, you, uh, in, in particular, the higher you go, the, the better the electric, the more efficient the electric aircraft is. Whereas if you have a combustion aircraft, as you, as you get higher, When you search for air taxi companies, the first one that probably comes up is Joby Aviation, California-based. Founded in 2009, Joby Aviation is without a doubt leading the EV tall competition to get the first electric air mobility service in operation. In this video, I will analyze the factors that make Joby Aviation the present leading air mobility company and why it is likely to be the first EV tall developer to start operating an air taxi service in the near future. My name is Joe Ben, and I'm from Joby Aviation. Uh, we're building electric air taxis to transform your daily commute. A serial entrepreneur with more than 40 patents to his name, Joe Ben Bevert, was in grade school when he first fantasized about building a flying machine that could hop relatively short distances without needing a long runway or a noisy rotor. Getting home from school involved two city buses and a five-mile walk up a dirt road, which gave him plenty of time to think about a better way. I've been dreaming about vertical takeoff and landing aircraft since I was a boy. In 1993, I realized that with electric propulsion, my dream could take flight. But at that time, lithium-ion batteries had not yet entered production. Fifteen years later, lithium batteries had evolved through multiple iterations driven by exploding demand for consumer electronics. And lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide cells with good specific energy, specific power, and excellent lifetime were in development for the nascent electric vehicle industry. Against this backdrop, I founded Joby Aviation in 2009 with the goal of building an electric aircraft to replace ground transportation. An aircraft safe enough for your daily trips, quiet enough to land at your destination, and accessible to everyone. The founders most likely to succeed in this difficult and competitive industry are the ones who have an innate ambition, not just to be an entrepreneur, but to solve a pain point and create positive change. They have a clear vision of how the world could be better, are obsessed with bringing that vision to life, and can translate that obsession into an inspiring mission. The reason we're so passionate about this and so excited about it is the dramatic effect that this is going to have on our cities. Uh, we think about the cities of the future as, as being green spaces where we've turned streets into parks and they're fundamentally uh, much nicer places in which to live. And uh, you know, over the last hundred years, the, the city has really been built around the automobile and we get to rethink that in a really profound way that's really, really exciting. Joby Aviation wants to launch its electric air taxi in just three short years, which could make it one of the first in the industry to do so. The first and arguably most challenging hurdle is certification. Joby has been working closely with the Federal Aviation Administration to gain certification for its electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, and announced in February that they had agreed to G1 certification conditions with the agency. These conditions detail the requirements that Joby's aircraft must meet to be certified. It might be useful in thinking about it in sort of three phases. Um, you've got the technical development, basically making sure that you build the right vehicle that is rightly spec, that has the right noise profile, that has the right payload, range, and speed. That's number one. Then you've got two, uh, the type certification of the aircraft. And then you've got three, the work that's done to sort of lay the groundwork for that commercial service. Um, so we feel really good about where we stand on number one. The vehicle is hitting the specs that we set out to hit, um, and delivering the targets that we set out to hit as long as sort of eight years ago. Second, on certification, as you rightly know, we received what's called a G1 issue paper from the FAA back in December, 
And you can think about that as the sort of blueprint for what certification looks like. The test that we have to do at the component level and then at the vehicle level to prove the safety of the aircraft and then be able to operate it in commercial service. So the receipt of that blueprint means that we now know what we have to do over the next three years to get to type certification and begin to then operate the vehicle. The last piece around kind of building the building blocks for commercial service, that's really what this moment is for us, really a transition from an R&D focused company to one that's increasingly going to be focused on certification. So that means doing route selection, picking our cities, making sure that we're using existing takeoff and landing infrastructure and provisioning new infrastructure. Um, so those are the pieces that we're really going to be focused on as we look over the next three to five years. Assuming Joby receives type certification under its 2023 timeline, it will start initial operations at the beginning of 2024. These operations will start in a few cities and build out a network and service from there. After that, they envision going deep in these markets and really developing out the scale of the network as they build out the service. In 2019, Joe Ben traveled to Japan to meet with Akio Toyota, grandson of Toyota Motor founder Kikairo Toyota, and current president of the company. Akio was intrigued by Joby's vision of aerial ride-sharing, driven by his intent on expanding his company from a vehicle manufacturer to a mobility service provider. For generations, the Toyota family has dreamed of building flying vehicles, and Akio was intrigued by the possibilities of electric flight that Joby sought to create. Ladies and gentlemen, the president and CEO of Toyota Motor Corporation, Akio Toyota. Every industry is trying to predict the future. And from my perspective, no one wants a crystal ball as much as the automobile industry. Everyone wants to know when will cars truly drive themselves? When will they know what I'm thinking? When will they fly? Akio believes that the future of transportation would be multimodal, and it was clear that there was a great deal of opportunity for collaboration between Joby and Toyota. After an initial investment by Toyota Ventures in 2017, Toyota Motor Corporation has made a total investment of approximately $400 million. But the strategic partnership with Toyota is about much more than financial support. Joby has worked directly with teams of Toyota engineers to plan production, design parts, and drive efficiency into the aircraft. With dozens of Toyota engineers, many of whom are working alongside their Joby counterparts in California, deployed across dozens of collaboration projects, Joby is preparing for manufacturing at scale to achieve the vision of saving a billion people an hour a day. Joby must deliver an aerial ride-sharing service at a price point that is increasingly affordable over time. The ability to steadily drive down end-user pricing depends in part on the ability to produce an aircraft efficiently at high volumes. It is here that Toyota's mastery in the art of high-quality, high-volume production will be proven invaluable. I will be making part 4, 5 and 6 in the next video. Make sure to hit the notification bell.